and welcome everybody in the entire universe to Hospital Records Podcast 347. Somewhere in the world there is someone for whom that is their lucky number. There has to be someone whose lucky number is 347. It just kind of stands to reason. Um, I am very, very pleased to be here with Dylan Royalston. Hello. Who is uh, over there in the hot seat. We have a fantastic kind of like double-edged video situation here. I'm actually looking at you instead of standing next to you, which is really, really nice. (laughs) How are you, Dylan? I'm pretty good. We're going to go through your album. Okay, great. And uh, it's about to drop. We're going to kick off with Splade Runner. we've got to talk to each other but I don't I don't really want to talk over your music <laughs> I just want to listen to it <laughs> now I, I was very fortunate to be able to catch about the the last two thirds of your set in Bristol at Motion at the weekend that was probably the better half. Was it? Or the better two thirds. The better two thirds. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was it was a brilliant two thirds. I have to say, it was really really good. Thanks. And um, as Fabio said to me, Fabio was like coming on after you with Groove Rider, and he he was there for the last half of your set, and he kept turning around to be going, "Rawston's amazing. Rawston's different. Rawston's got different stuff. He's like, I haven't heard a set like it. It's it's really good. It's all about Rawston." <laughs> Which is really nice. Yeah, that's nice. Fabio's heard a lot of people play over the years. Did you enjoy it though? I loved it. The first 15 minutes were tough. Yeah. I thought maybe people weren't going to get it. But then at, at some point it just switched and then I kind of got in the zone. Felt like everyone was on the same page with me. Well, that's because you're playing music that comes from a different place. You know, a very, very different place. You're not just playing, you're not rolling out the normal bangers. So, uh, yeah, people have to adjust to that journey and then you take them with you. Yeah, yeah, that, definitely. Like, I, I opened with that last song, with Splade Runner. Right. And I, I could see a lot of people leave straight away. Wow. <laughs> but the ones that stayed and then more... You know, they were enjoying it, and yeah. then more people came in and they stayed, so... Yeah. And then it just it just settled in and it was good. No, it was, it was properly going off, like, for the last half. It was wicked. It was fun. It was a really fun gig. This is Strobes one of my highlights of your album. I absolutely love it.
and we are going through the popular mechanics album it's out right now on med school some of the best artwork that we've ever had the privilege of uh of featuring on on one of our products by the man himself dylan how did you do that artwork well the the story behind it i guess is you sent me a video that kind of sparked the idea so, oh yeah 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 it was kind of mid-century modern sort of yeah you, you sent me the uh, tony sent me this random video of about it was an animated score from the 60s that's right and um and that kind of reminded me of some music that i studied at school and wow and all the weird scores that they did in the 60s and then I just looked into that much deeper and I found all these crazy kind of weird ways that people represent music. And then I sort of took those ideas and tried to make them into the, you know, a cover that fit my music. And it actually, it looks nothing like the video I sent you at all. It's stylistically completely different. No, 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 yeah. But it's that was a starting point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it is amazing. And I mean, the actual covers fantastic it's like a oh, it's like a top-down view of it's a bit like have you seen the new blade runner i i definitely have yes so <laughs> which i think is visually incredible as a movie oh it, it's amazing yeah and it, it it is trying to reference blade runner a bit and i hadn't you know when i did that cover i hadn't seen the new one but those scenes of the um Tyrell Corporation. Yeah, o- you, overflying those buildings. Yeah, yeah. And, and when and the lighting in the interior yeah. lighting, yeah. which is really amazing in the new one. Yeah, um, I think it's even better than the old one in in some ways. But but that kind of gold kind of lighting. Was, yeah, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. definitely in, and like it was something I was trying to capture in the um in the cover. It's amazing actually, yeah. that, and it actually kind of all, all, all comes together. Um, I mean, while we're on the subject of, of Blade Runner, um. Because I felt is visually and sonically incredible, like oh, definitely pretty much unsurpassed. But I was slightly not sold on the story. I don't know about you. No, I agree. I I actually, I it didn't have the emotion that the first one has. Yeah. And one thing I was thinking, I don't know. I think a lot of people would disagree with me. I think the music in the middle. I think they almost got a bit lazy with it. Like it was such beautiful music, but I felt like. I needed to switch it up and get something with a bit of momentum in there, mm. because in the middle you 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 know you're getting to to two hours. You you do need to push it along with something. Mm. I mean, I loved it at the very end when they brought in the original theme. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, but, but there was just a bit in the middle where you know I think a lot of people were struggling. But I hadn't thought that maybe that was down to the music, but maybe you're right. Yeah, but I'm not sure. There was something, and I definitely agree. It's the story. But the music should kind of push the picture along a bit. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's a good movie though. I think it's worthy of, oh, of it the is. original. You gotta see it in a really good cinema though. It's 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 Definitely. not it's not one to download and, and watch on your laptop. It's it's you gotta be in a room with a massive sound system. Yeah. And a huge screen because it's biggest screen you can. So immerse yourself in it. Right, on with the music now. This is new music by Signal and Disprove. This is System Leak. And it's coming out on Invisible, which is one of the noisier family of labels. Actually, there's a sound in there that's a little bit like that kind of like sound in Blade Runner, isn't it? Yep. Do you know what I mean? (laughs) Thank you. 
So for those of you watching this on video, you, you would have been wondering, what are they talking about? Or you may have been completely uninterested in what we were talking about, but we were talking about how big Russia is, basically. And when you're flying from England to Japan, what are those vast kind of like wastelands full of huge towers and lights in the middle of the desert? What are they? What happens there? What are they for? What do they represent for the future of mankind? Tell us. We'd like to know. Anyway, I'm actually going to St. Catherinesburg this weekend. In fact, I'm going uh, tomorrow. So uh, maybe I'll find out, because that's somewhere near the middle of Russia. So, um, yeah, Dylan, you're, you're pretty busy this weekend. In fact, tonight, Friday, you are playing in... Uh, tomorrow, no, Thursday, I'm playing ADE. Then Prague, then... Oh, yeah. And for those of you watching this video <laughs> podcast, we're recording it on Wednesday last week. It's actually coming out next week. It doesn't matter. You blew it, Tony. It doesn't matter. We planned this. <laughs> I wanted to say something. <laughs> it, it's, it's time travel. We do it all the time. So last weekend I played ADE. <laughs> yeah, you did. Let's hope the show wasn't cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Mullet loves it. Not. Uh, so yeah, uh, gonna go on to a tune now. Honest chat by Spectra Soul. Absolutely wicked album. Totally recommended. This is called Heartbeat coming up. And Spectra Soul are an example of an artist who have really made it work moving from an established label to starting their own label. It's not easy, I know, because I've done it. it. Requires a huge amount of effort. But if you work hard enough and you're clever enough, it can work. So total respect to Spectra Soul. I love it when like when drums are really good to listen to. Just like drums. Those drums are beautiful. People neglect it too much these days. They they just think, oh yeah, because everyone plays off MP3s, don't need drums on the intro. But actually they can be a beautiful thing just to listen to. Paradox is amazing at that. That's his thing, right? It is, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're just really enjoying the story that this tune is telling because we like that, don't we, Dylan? Definitely. We like tunes Definitely. that actually tell a story and have a beginning and a middle and an end in the development. It 
it's like with tunes that are the same in the second half as they are in the first half, I always feel a little bit cheated. It's, it's like, you know, if you buy a book that's got photos in the middle and, and you get to the middle and you look at the photos and you start reading the second half and it's actually the first half. You'd be pretty disappointed. You would be, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, I guess when producers do that, they do it on the assumption that no one's going to listen past the breakdown. It must be that. Yeah. Because I don't, I've never done that with a tune. Well, they can't be bothered. Yeah. Heartbeat by Spectra Soul. I advise their album. It's very, very good. Right, I'm going to play the title track of your album now, and it is my personal favourite track. Um, and it was interesting at, in Bristol because both um, Kino and High Contrast came up to me saying how much they're feeling the track, Popular Mechanics. And I knew I knew that Lincoln would like it because it's got a certain inspiration or resonance with Underworld for me as a track. Sure. And, uh, and we know High Contrast is all about Underworld. So um, anyway, without further ado... one of those tunes that every now and then I get a tune that I know is always going to be in my set for quite a long time. Kronos was like that. I was in my set for ages. Still is sometimes. I'm trying to do a VIP of that right now. Oh, wicked. <laughs> wicked. A little update. See, I, lo- I like it when I'm, when I'm in my kind of full tilt performance mode on stage because that whole huge build up in the middle lets me, I can lie on the floor and make the crowd do stupid things. <laughs> There's time. I like it. <laughs> set the characters up, you've established who they are, and now they develop.
Now, I think most most of the people tuning into this podcast, um, they they may, maybe will know how you make your music. That a lot of your music, if not all of your music, is hardware generated. Yes, definitely. Is it all? I, I, I use software, but yep. um, definitely it always starts on hardware. Yeah. And there's a lot of hardware through the whole process. Um, you need to check out... Um, Dylan's videos of him um, operating his modular system. It's probably a bit on this album. There's a little bit less modular than the last album. A lot okay. of the tunes started with the modular, but yep. I, I kind of I got frustrated with how hard it was to tune or to stay in tune. I, yeah, 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 yeah. I, and it, you know, in this in this album, I kind of wanted things to develop and progress. Yeah, and. Um, Using fixed hardware synths is much better for that. By tune, do you mean literally the tuning of the oscillators? The tuning of the oscillators, yeah. So, so explain what that means to someone who doesn't really, um, has never used the modular synth. So with a modular synth, you, before you can do anything, you have to go and make sure all your oscillators, or all your, before you make a sound, you want to make, know that that sound is going to be the sound you want. So you spend 15 minutes tuning everything. Kind of like tuning your piano before you play it. But then about 15 minutes into playing it, it tends to go out of tune. So you have to go and retune it. And that's very annoying if you're making a uh, melodic or a harmonic song. And the oscillator is actually, it, it's the circuit, it's a piece of circuitry that actually generates the, the tone, the initial tone that you use to build your sounds, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. And if, you know, if the temperature changes in the room, that oscillator can decide to just play a bit flat or a bit sharp. And, you know, you might not even notice it and then you come back later and you've got to retune everything and it's it's tricky. So um, I think I used more more big, you know, hardware keyboards on this one. Yeah. 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 And, and you do have a fair few of those as well. I'm... I have way too many. I'm trying to sell a few. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, really? Okay. Maybe we can talk when I come over to Australia. <laughs> yeah. Let's go back in time now. This, this is your first single on Mesco, wasn't it? First EP. I, yeah, first the test, EP. The test came out before that. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So this is your first standalone EP. This is Cerulean Blue. And uh, this is a tune that was probably in my sets for about four years, I'd say. It's an absolute classic for med school. Fresh Dylan. Yeah, I haven't heard it in a while. It really does. Are you not playing this in your sets then? I haven't been for a while. Wow. I should. I mean, I agree. It sounds good on these speakers because it was made on these same speakers. Was it? Yeah, or not quite as fancy as these ones, but step down. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's kind of at home on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's a brilliant shoot. Now, um, something that I'm really, really happy about is that we actually get to tour together properly. At last. In November and December, along with Dan Newtone and Fred V. 
and Andy Ruthless. So, um, we're do- are you on all of these days? Uh, everyone except the last one. Okay, so um, I'll just tell you about these, these tour dates because I'm, I'm so excited about them. 23rd of November, we come to HQ in Adelaide, uh, which is a brilliant venue. Always, always goes off. 24th, the Prince Band Room in St Kilda in Australia. I've never played that. That should be interesting. Yeah. I thought this. I thought the 24th was Melbourne. That is. That is oh, oh, it is Melbourne. Okay. Yeah. Is that a suburb of Melbourne? It is. Yeah. Okay. Intr- I'm sure that I've, I played in the Prince. That'll be really good. Melbourne's. Every time I've played in Melbourne, it's been amazing. Yeah. Really good. I love Melbourne. It's yeah. wicked. Um, 25th. We're doing that. We're doing that thing where we play in Sydney during the day and Perth at night. That'll be fun. Which is, which is, I've done it before. As long as the storms aren't too bad and the flights actually are not grounded, works. Yes. <laughs> but if there's horrendous thunderstorms, uh, we may not make it to Perth, but hopefully we will, because we have. I've done it twice before and it's worked every single time. So, um, yeah, during the day we're at home, the venue in Sydney. I've never played it at home. What's it like? It's uh, it, well, it, for a while it was like a super club. It was our our biggest club. All right. Um, and I guess it still is in a way. Yeah. But um, it, I, I've never played it. I've been there lots of times. Uh, actually, no, I have played it, but I've never played the main room. So okay. That should be really cool. I think the like the sound in there will be amazing. And is it is it like a bank holiday weekend or something? Is that why we're playing there during the day? Is what it, what day is it? Uh, I don't know. Twenty fifth <laughs> of November. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. Uh, oh, okay. Just a regular weekend. Interesting. Uh, and then in the evening, we're playing at Villa in Perth, which we want my first time at Villa. Same. I always play at Metro normally. Yep. I've, yeah. Um, Villa's and, supposed to be great, though. It's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I keep seeing my artists kind of like Instagramming themselves from it and thinking, I really want to play there. So looking forward to that. And uh, then there's a break. I'm going to go to Wellington and spend three or four days snorkeling in the freezing cold sea <laughs> yeah. which I'm assuming it will be in December have you got a wetsuit um, I'll, I'll borrow one I think I'll yeah. find someone who's got one you'll need one yeah I know <laughs> I naively kind of thought because it's summer the sea will be hot but it won't be no it, it's, it's it's coldest then the sea will be thinking <laughs> oh it's still winter yeah. and the sun will be going no it's not it's summer so um, yeah but but I'm going to snorkel anyway because the only thing I really, 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 really love doing that takes me totally away from music and everything else. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, uh, good time for it. Then we are, Dylan is going to join us. We're playing at the Grand in Wellington on the 30th of November. 1st of December, we come to Winnie Bago's in Christchurch. 2nd of December, the studio in Auckland. And then Dylan disappears into the mist, and the rest of us will play at Loco Cantina in Queenstown. It'll be fun. Yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to it. That's going to be a really nice touring party as well. And this is, of course, Diorama by Ralston. So Dylan, have you ever been a teacher? Have you ever taught what you do? Yeah, to, to a few people, like private. Informally? Yeah, oh, I guess, like I've had a few students, that, a few students that I've, I've just taught one-on-one. One-to-one? Okay. Yeah. Is that like just people who've got in touch with you or yeah, yeah. do you actually have a, do you advertise a service? I did, I did advertise it for a while. I had one guy that came all the way from across um, across the city, and all he wanted to know was how to put a transient on the end of a, like on the front of a, a uh, a trap kick drum. Are you serious? Yeah, he's just like, how do I make my 808s punch? And wow. I was like, how about this? And I did it, and then he just went back outside, got in his mum's car, and drove off. <laughs> Paid me the money. <laughs> he never came back. <laughs> I guess he discovered YouTube after that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. But I, I produce a few, um, a few other people as well yeah. um, in Sydney, and um, just 
local guys that have gotten in touch. That, yeah. And I, I, I think that kind of teaches them as well because yeah. they see what I do to their their tunes and and you know they can ask questions about how I did what I did and. Oh yeah. yeah it seems it's, to go well. It's massively. Um, it's it's really interesting and rewarding to work with someone else. I mean, even like for me on my last album, um, when I was doing the final mix downs, I brought brought my computer in here and Dan Newtone came down and I just worked with him on the very final mix downs. Okay. And he, he just kind of, he just showed me a couple of really simple tricks that made such a difference and that I've now taken out in, into my work going forwards and I, I now do naturally and it okay. really, really helps. You You'll know. have to tell me what they are. <laughs> you probably know them already. I mean, the way your music sounds, you definitely do, you know. It's just like it's kind of it's kind of when to use a limiter quite aggressively on certain things and when not to. Okay. You know, just like control the peaks of certain frequencies and yeah. It's kind of Swiss Army knife stuff, really. You know. What? I had. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> um, I had. My mastering engineer kind of got involved um, on this album a little bit. Yeah. He's got a lot bigger speakers than me. Okay. He, he can hear things that you can't hear on, even okay. in my good studio. Yeah. There's a lot that's going on right down the bottom. Right. That you can't hear. And I'd often send him a mix and I'd go, how's this? Yeah. And he'd go, you know, on every speaker except my big ones, it sounds great. Yeah. Put it on the big ones and it's got, you know, no weight or no really low end punch and so he'd, he'd he'd reject some of them and I'd you know send them back and I'd, I'd try so, to fix it up so you kind of did it remotely yeah I mean in the end I went around there and yeah and I did the mastering with him and yeah, yeah, he yeah, did yeah. the mastering and I watched yeah and, you know gave him some direction back in the days when um, in the early days of the label and my previous labels before hospital as a matter of course I would always attend the vinyl mastering session um, usually with Stuart Hawkes at, at Heathman's he's a bit of a mastering legend now and uh, it always amazed me how he never actually did anything <laughs> much at all but got the tunes sounding really really good that's a sign of a good mix really I, I suppose so, but yeah, I mean, like, he just kind of ran everything through his like billion dollar outboard. <laughs> yeah. That's basically what my guy does. Yeah. It, it's all set up, it's, a, it's almost like a symbiotic system. Yeah. So when you send a tune through at the right starting level, which he knows, all the gear then interacts. Yeah. All the mastering gear interacts and it, you know, levels everything in it puts it in a place where it should be yeah absolutely but you're right if the mix down's pretty good they won't have to do that much yeah this is brand new music by Spy this is called Dreaming and it's from part 3 of his Alone in the Dark EP series talking with people who get their mix down so good you don't need to do anything when you master them this is one of those guys He's impressive.
incoming new Royalston again. This is I Will Keep It Warm. I didn't even recognise it. Really? <laughs> What were you keeping warm? Oh, it's from the um, sample in it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's keeping dinner warm. This is the beautifully titled Oscilla, which um, kind of sounds like a, a girl's name or a kind of Japanese monster. <laughs> I prefer that. That's yeah. good. <laughs> creative life did you start being compelled to create your signature second build up and second drop can you remember because it is unique to you I can't really remember when but 
I think it took me so long to get signed that I kind of went off on my own path for so long. Yeah. Just not really getting anywhere in the in, in my eyes, I guess. That I came up with rules that I impose upon myself. Yeah. Um, and I think that must be it. It's just a long period of time. Only influenced by myself and and my own little small set of in- influences. But it, it makes you structurally unique. Yeah, I, I can't I can't put a put a date on them or anything like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just fascinated. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's it's a brilliant feature of, of your music. One of many, you know. I think maybe I was trying to stand out. Yeah. Because I couldn't at that time. Well, it works. Yeah. Now, a switch of med school artists now. This is brand new forthcoming music from Kino. A man who is also in third album mode, just like your good self. This is Light Cascading, featuring Becca Jane Gray on vocals. managed to get outside on Monday when we had that most extraordinary light in the sky. I was actually going to see Blade Runner again. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was the same. Yeah. It was it was it was it was Hurricane Ophelia bringing loads of sand and and ash from Portugal and Spain. Oh okay. But at three o'clock in the afternoon we were like the sky was mustard coloured and and the sun was kind of this weird pink. Yeah it was weird. I, was, I, you know, I'm not here very often, so I, I was like, "Is this what England is normally it's like?" It's never like this. <laughs> it's never been like that in my life. Yeah. It was most peculiar. If, 
did feel exactly like Blade Runner. Yeah. Like you're in some kind of like nuclear wasteland or something. Weird. I wouldn't have it any other way. This track is called Light Cascading, that's why I thought of that. Also, on that day on Monday, Kino was in a forest outside of Bristol with a piano that he'd bought for £20 that morning, shooting a video with Harry, who keeps popping in and out to do the, the lights, and uh, and with a couple of vocalists. I think they might have been doing this tune, I'm not sure. But I'm very interested to see how that came out. Yeah, it's going to be a kind of a post-apocalyptic uh, yeah, absolutely. Kino tune. Absolutely. And Kino's album, All the Shimmering Things, is coming out on the 3rd of November. And uh, you have a bit of a connection to that album, Dylan. I do. I, I did the artwork for it. Um, randomly? Yeah. Well, I think that, I think that was because um, you did such a brilliant job on your own album. And uh, I just kind of like, I threw it out there and, and you came out with a brilliant idea. Eyes yeah, just on one of those of lucky ones. It was, it was, you know, pretty quick and easy and and fun. Yeah, it's a, it's a good title, you know. It, it just brings up heaps of images straight away. It's it's a wicked title, isn't it? Yeah. Right, let's get back to your album now. Fork Tongue featuring Lifelike, Lifelike from Wales. Of course, it's Lifelike. I was kind of, I was finally li- li- what? <laughs> I think it's Lifelike. Lifelike. <laughs> Haikus blinded by jibes from the IQ Life like video so coming soon mics too Four, 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 tongue flame Throw for the verse Like a Moltres in person The lips all burn Oldest fam was a Mr. Burns Rubbing hands covered in ash We stashed in urns An earnest wordsmith A nursing verbs MC who dare venture Never return Ah, oh, I would have thought by now You'd have learned Should have turned back When his lips first purse Spire my up Collars like light blue Floating cause I'm glued To the skyline Night supply to Hiking through haikus, blinded by jibes from the IQ. Life likes a Viking on mics too. Like a old present person, the lips all burn. Oldest fan was a Mr. Burns. Rubbing hands covered in ash, we stashed in urns. An earnest wordsmith, a nursing verbs. MC Zoo, their venture, never return. Oh, I would have thought by now you'd have learned. Should have turned back when his lips first pursed. Ate his whole weight for what the taste was worth, but has still never quenched that day old thirst. Slurping on worms and Percy pigs from birth till the first days of nursery kid Brother taught me Turkish and minimal amounts enough to purchase kebabs on night south Hush lights out, now focus on the ghosties Casper, friendly flow, so no coney Joke on me, the joke's on you While you broke in a homeless place My pace, you blowing smoke at a hopeless pace I'll race you up on mountains, face the place you stay to Quite a dystopian flex there on the lyrics. It is. Apart from kebab. (laughs) I love the lyrics. And it's, uh, it's been a long time coming, but Woody, a.k.a. Etherwood, a.k.a. Edward Allen, has finished his third album. Everyone's on third album mode. What's going on? No. <laughs> it's crazy. But um this this is the first tune that we're we're putting out there from the album. This is called Firelit Sky. Very appropriate for Monday as well.
so good to have Etherwood back. Life without Etherwood is not the same as life with Etherwood. We need his music in our lives. I can't tell you when the album's coming out because I don't know. We haven't even scheduled it as far as I'm aware. Oh, really? Yeah, really. So there's something that I wanted to ask you, which was not quite halfway through the process of you sort of writing and producing this album um, you became a father yep obviously for which massive congratulations thank you um, but really interestingly and highly unusually very shortly after becoming a dad you had this massive spurt of creativity and uh that, ne- that honestly trust me that never happens when people become dads they just dry up usually and it takes a long time to get their creative juices back because they're so completely exhausted so do, do you remember that happening did it feel like that to you yeah I, I, I suppose it did yeah I, you kind of well I, I felt like I had to focus more you know I've got to got to get this done. I have less time, so I've got to be a bit more productive with it. Yeah. (laughs) Got to be a bit more productive with my time. So, yeah, um, less stuffing around in the studio, maybe. Yeah, it was, it was, but it, there was, there was, there was a a seismic shift. Yeah, right. Okay. I mean, I was really enjoying what you were making anyway, but then, but it was like suddenly it it all came together. I hope it keeps going. Because I was, I was expecting like, Dylan had a baby that's brilliant we're never going to see this album now you know yeah that was what that's the kind of auto response (laughs) when you're dealing with artists and it was like no actually blimey you really got it together it was amazing I have a good partner to thank as well like she she definitely bears a lot of the weight there that's amazing when I'm in the studio very very important as well yeah from, from a creative standpoint yeah um, I also ha- happen to have a long-suffering and uh, amazing partner who has enabled me to make music all these years. So um, it's yeah, it's absolutely gold. <laughs> and uh, and yours also makes rather amazing cakes as well. She does. Yeah. <laughs> I think she was she was trying to teach um, our son to to bake the other day. Oh really? But <laughs> how old is he? Is he one yet? He's not one yet. All right. He's afraid of the beater. Okay, <laughs> literally terrified. Is it like a cr- a handle one? No, like it's that? the it's an electric. Oh, so an, oh electric one. So yeah, that, so it makes a weird sound. Yeah. He'll get over it, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> but does he like kind of kneading the the dough? Does he like getting getting his hands messy? He's more in the messy, definitely more throwing it around the room. Okay, yeah, kind of yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this conduct this is shards and it is by conduct yes and upstairs resides your agent and my agent Chris Blue Martin so if we don't play music from his label he gets even more sarcastic than he normally is <laughs> That's actually not why I'm playing this. I'm playing this because it's rather good. It's a brilliant album, this. I was listening to this while I flew into London. That must have been very, very appropriate. It was. Yeah. I was very, very tired. Yeah. And it was really doing weird things with my head. Really? It's good. Nice.
when you're when you're running a record label, sometimes you really have to crack the whip and try and force music out of an artist. It's never been like that with you. Um, it can be like that with with some artists, but every now and then, your artists just surprise you and say, "Look, look what we've done." And uh, a couple of months ago, three months ago, Krakota and Open Dawn, because they met each other early, earlier in the year and they decided to collaborate from a distance between Brazil and Bournemouth. And, uh, and lo and behold, they made the most amazing EP very, very quickly that definitely gets the best out of both of them. So um, I'm going to play this tune called Paladin. It's absolutely amazing. The EP's coming out. When is it coming out? Have a look. Pretty soon. Oh, it's under the post-it note. Yes, 10th of November. Very soon indeed. You can kind of see how their styles go together. It had never occurred to me until I heard them working together. Now I can. You know, I can I can see how they complement one another. So Dylan, when when did you first start animating? Oh, probably around 1997. Really? That long ago? Are you that, serious? I, it was pretty, you know, that's like rudimentary 3D stuff. Because um, everything took so long back then. Yeah. But I, in, I, I suppose in the last six, six years, I've kind of gotten into it again. Um, I took a big break just doing graphics and music. Yeah. Yeah, but I did, yeah, I did at uni, I, I kind of studied animation, or at least taught myself animation, because I was in a wow. graphic design course, so, you know, making a ball move across the screen is, was a big deal then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's how I got into music, actually. Really? Uh, was making, the, like, putting the sound effects on that animation of the ball. No and, way. And then I thought, wow, this is, you know, the sound really brings this to life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I got... I had done music before then, but I really kind of got into music production at that point. Kind of really didn't want to be a graphic designer, which was annoying because I just studied it for four years. And, yeah. So do you do you do animations for other people? Do you? I do. Is it another side of Royalston that we don't know about? Yeah, I, I do. I've done it for a little bit for TV. Um, a bit, yeah, like ad agencies and stuff. But I'm not... I really, I have a lot of respect for people that can hand animate, you yeah. know, like cartoon animation. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Like, that is just such an amazing skill. Like cell animation. Cell yeah. animation, yeah. exactly. That, I can do a bit of it with the help of photos, yeah. but that's not really the same thing. Yeah. I mean, it is amazing, like, the animation that you do, like, for your music, it really, really brings it to life. I haven't had a lot of time to do it for this this album. Yeah. Oh, apart from the main animation. Yeah. yeah. Well, this has been um, a very lovely journey through your album. Thanks. And... Uh, through your recent times we're going to end now with a tune um, it's got it's got a title that kind of makes makes me think of yacht rock and kind of like you know being somewhere in America Miami or somewhere like that it's, it's called cruising <laughs> why is it called cruising good question 
<laughs> Why is it called cruising? <laughs> because I actually, that was the working title. That's such a non Royalston title. Know, it was the working title, and I have a whole list of names that it was going to be, <laughs> but I actually forgot to retitle it when I sent it off. I, I'm sure there's an email somewhere of me going, can we change that title? <laughs> and, and Tom Mullet saying, no, it's too it's late. too late, yeah. <laughs> So, listeners at home, you can actually come up with your own title for this tune and uh, and let Dylan know what you come up with. <laughs> I suppose it, make, it makes me laugh because it's such an unchallenging sort of like, you know. <laughs> it really it's is. Just not, it's not like you at all. <laughs> I know, I, I knew that the whole time as well. <laughs> Got to change this title. And you have been in the company of Royalston for the last hour. We've been going through the amazing popular mechanics. It's a design classic of an album. This is what we love about Royalston. You turn your cliche radar onto maximum and you will not ping it at all throughout the entire album. It will not go off. I love that. Um, when you're putting your DJ sets together to represent you and your music, do you find it easy or hard to find other people's tunes that that kind of integrate with your tunes? Hard. Or it, I find it very hard to... The more of my tunes I leave out, the much it's much easier to make a set. Right. <laughs> but because my tunes... Are, they, I, I think they do sound different to a lot of drum and bass. Yeah. You do find ones where there's that nice overlap. We yep. can hear both tunes, and they they both add to make something better. Yeah. Yeah. So in some ways it's beneficial, but it takes me a bloody long time to work out mixes. And then I tend to play the same mixes because there's only a few tunes that'll mix with each of mine. They are compatible. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know that feeling very very well. But it's lovely when you come across them, isn't it? Oh yeah. So Dylan, thank you. Thank you for coming in and thank you for, for being involved in the podcast and sharing your your thoughts with us. Thanks for having me. It was fun. And uh, I, I can't wait for the tour. I'm really, really looking forward to it. Yeah, that's going to be good. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. And um, also, thanks for making such a brilliant album. You're welcome. And as always, a massive honour for us to work with you. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll um, see you in November, I guess. Yeah. Cool. Looking forward to it. Yeah.